Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Envoy of Kairos, back for more Pokemon Infinity. We are officially in the post-game. Uh, it's been a bit since I've played this. I've been very busy with the holidays and personal obligations and such. But this should be up the Saturday after the main game finale. So, let's see what we've got going on here. Sup, Lucy? Okay. Probably has the other two starters for me. Yes, Professor? Nice to see you. I was worried you had gotten... I was worried you had forgotten about us after becoming the Trident Champion. Just kidding. I know you wouldn't let something like that go to your head. I'm glad you stopped by, though. I'm just wrapping up the Ego Trainer orientation, where I give new and upcoming trainers their first Pokémon. Just so happened to have two left, and they're the ones you didn't choose when you first left my lab. I figured the best person to raise them would be the one that just became a champion. Excellent. I know they'll do great with you. Maybe they'll end up the next Trident Tournament. Speaking of, it sounds like the tournament was such a big hit, the cruise line from Kanto has docked in Hayesport City. The SSN is a world-trotting cruise line, I believe. It just stopped at Sinnoh before docking here. Oh, there's gonna be some interesting people on that ship for me to meet with. I guess I know where I'm going. Okay, it looks like he gave me those two, and now all of my Pokémon from the main game are gone. All I have are these two, and I have to use them to get to the next town in order to reach a PC and do anything, really. Okay, finally. Oh, great, so I still can't get my team back. I have to go all the way to Professor's lab, don't I? Yeah, and they made sure to put trainers in the way to make it take as long as possible. Okay, that's a bit annoying. At least these guys are leveling fast. And there appears to be a Rotom down here. Let me catch it. Alright, now to get into this freshly repaired lab and see what the geriatric future version of us has to say. Drew, what a bittersweet surprise. The fact you're here means I failed. I suppose I owe you an explanation. I figured out a long time ago that all of this was just in our head. Time is different here, so it's hard to say for certain just how long we've been perceiving all this, but it feels like decades. For you, it probably feels more like it's just been about 22 hours and 49 minutes, so it's keeping track of the exact hours I put into the game. Great. Just as a rough estimate. See, my journey started out just like yours. Woke up in Genesis Forest. Went back to hate us down, got a starter Pokemon, and so on and so forth. Except there was no Professor Thorn. This hilltop used to be barren. My journey took me all around Ego, collecting the badges, exploring the places, doing the classic sequence of events of an ideal Pokemon adventure. I did eventually come to face with space-time deities, and I bested them on several occasions. I went on space adventures with Palkia. I traveled through time with the Alga. I didn't do a lot with Giratina. That one is a bit too unsettling for be around for me. Then on one occasion, where I did have all three of them by my side, we started the path of breaking open the multiverse. When working with just the Alga, it is difficult to create divergent timelines, because the Alga keeps things in order. But with the space energy of Palkia and the dark energy of Giratina, we were able to make the first alternate timeline. 
I had them send me back to create a new timeline in which I got to work with a younger version of myself. Knowing what I had learned from my few years of adventuring around Ego, I was able to help my younger self grow and progress more efficiently. Then, working together, we did it again. We just continued making branching timelines just to explore and discover all we could in this fantastic world. But one day, we hit the limit. We made one too many branch timelines. Unbeknownst to us at the time, there is a Pokémon that is higher than Arceus, one that came before it. I have named it Archaos. It can exist through all dimensions, but prefers to stay in the void around our reality. It lays eggs in that void. From those eggs come new universes, and an Arceus to go with it. When we created the branching timelines, it started to disrupt the dark space that our Chaos and the other universes inhabited. So, our Chaos intervened to see what was going on, and in the battle that followed, our Chaos reset our reality, realigning the timeline and setting things right. Before waking up from the reset, for a brief moment, I could hear my parents' voices. They were telling me to wake up, and that they'd be there with me until I woke up. And when I finally was able to wake up, I was in Genesis Forest again. I knew what I heard, and I knew this time around that I was experiencing an ego wasn't real. But I went along with it anyway, because I figured if I'm gonna be here, I might as well enjoy myself. Why wake up when the reality I'm experiencing right now is more comforting and enjoyable than the one that I call home? So I stayed here for years, repeating the same adventures, talking to the same people, who always said the same things. I have fought our chaos dozens of times now, and have existed in thousands of alternate timelines. I would travel to a time before young me originally arrived, and establish myself as Professor Thorne, the new ecstatic professor to the region. I continue to do that for years, while still traversing time and space with your help. One day, I realized that I had to put an end to it. That I had to fill, that I had my fill of ego, and it was time to finally wake up. I thought that if I could give you the adventure we craved, and it ended with a big climactic battle, it would satisfy us enough to snap out of it. I had hoped that in the transition after the reset, I would have convinced you once and for all to wake up and go back home. But here you are. Yet again, not satisfied with your own world, so if you returned to the one we made up, I suppose we just have to move ahead with what we always do then. Finish exploring Ego and any other realities within reach. Since I've used our chaos to reset reality, we shouldn't have to worry about Team Fate interfering for quite some time. In this reality, you just became the Trident Tower Champion no one in Ego knows what happened with future you or the space-time deities. I also went ahead and returned the trophy to the museum with a new piece of Arcanium that looks like you know, that looks just like the Chaos Shard. They didn't seem to notice. So, I guess you're kind of free to do whatever now? When you want, come meet me in the lab. I have some cool upgrades to show you. We'll do in a moment, then. I guess that means all the places that were blocked off are accessible now, and I still can't use the PC. That's strange. Hopefully talking to him will help fix that and get me access to my team again. Ooh, what's this on the desk? Quantum upgrade. Hmm. Wonder what that's gonna do. There are two main upgrades that I think you'll appreciate, but you have to step into the machine to see them. 
All right. Let's get this going then. Initializing space bending protocol. Quantifying biological molecular values. Digitizing. Ah, yes, we're back here. Welcome to the virtual briefing room. This is upgrade number one. I've created an efficient user interface to aid you in traversing the multiverse. From now on, you can come and go as you please when it comes to reality hopping missions. This will be kind of like your headquarters, to see what scenarios are available for you to take part in. At the back wall, there are nodes that you can use to access the PC or heal your team. As you're out and about ego, I'll be able to keep it updated with any new realities we uncover. That's where upgrade suit. The upgrade number two comes to play, the exosuit. The suit you're wearing has been upgraded. You can now wear it when you leave here, assuming you don't care if people stare at you. The upgraded suit has a pathfinding feature that will help you scale the sides of cliffs. I'll call it the rock climb feature. Good, finally, I was wondering when we get that. It has also been insulated to protect you against extreme temperatures. Any place that would normally be too hot or too cold is now accessible. And it's got a built-in thermal scanner as well, which will allow you to see things that would normally be invisible. Might be good for hunting Kecleon. And that's it. Take a look around and see if there are any missions you want to partake in, or take the suit for a test drive out around Ego. The choice is yours. Oh, and I was able to uncover some TMs you seem to have lost in the transition back. I've added those to your inventory. I'll be on the other end. Yeah, I'll be on the other end at the computer if you need me. And... Is this what I think it is? Oh yes, I almost forgot about that. It seems like shortly after you updated the computer, some sort of an egg materialized. I've been able to deduce that it was generated from some sort of malfunction in the code. I urge you to take it. Who knows what may hatch from it. A digi egg. Uh, I know that pattern anywhere. I already know what's going to hatch from that. And it's going to be so good. Ah, that's the PC access. Okay. So where can I find my team? Ah, bottom row, box three. There's everybody. Our chaos generally keeps to itself until it senses a disruption in the flow of the multiverse. So if you want a chance to capture it yourself, we're going to have to do a bit of reality hopping to get its attention. We should only have to do a little bit of it, because I know of a more efficient way to summon our chaos. I'm going to put some tasks on display that you'll be able to interact with to get more direction. So we've got two main things to accomplish if you want to face our chaos. We'll need to jump from our dimension to another in order to start causing a disruption in the flow of reality. It won't take much. I've got two missions already that will help us with that. Just need to find one more. The other task is that you have to obtain and learn how to play the Azure Flute. Don't worry, as long as you're wearing the Exo suit, it'll be able to help you play any tune you hear, automatically. The last place we saw the Azure Flute was with Koba, for summoning with Pialka, Palkia for the Koros Festival. If you're lucky, maybe you can convince him to give it to you, if he still has it. Once you've got the flute, seek out a competent flute player while wearing the Exo suit, so that it can learn how to play like a musician. I already know where to find them, thankfully. For both of these things, I would start off in Echo Rock Town. Check out the other available tasks. Some of them will be necessary in getting to our chaos. Okay, got quite a few options here. This mission will help in two ways, causing a small disruption in reality to attract our chaos, and help us get an item that will help to capture our chaos. The production of Master Balls was shut down years ago. That's the only thing that we know that can capture our chaos for sure. 
We need some other materials as well, but I will be creating a new ball specifically to capture our chaos. In order to do that, I need the programming blueprint from the original Master Ball. So, I'm going to send you back to a location in our timeline that I know for sure had a Master Ball. All you gotta do is drop in, get the ball, and come back. We we'll even hook into their warping tech to make it easier on my end. Okay, I think they're gonna end up sending me back to the rocket base with all the teleporters to steal it from Giovanni then. That's gonna be a good mission. Now, this mission is definitely optional in our pursuit of our chaos, but not necessary. Now that you're fully conscious of the dream, like reality, that you're in, you've awakened the Ego Guardians, Mesprit, Azelf, and Yuxi. They have the power to calm the space-time deities using the red shards that they conjure up. If we can get our hands on some of the shards that they leave behind, I can use it to craft a Pokeball powerful enough to capture our Chaos without fail. If you can find these mythical Pokémon, they may be able to grant you with the red shards needed. Awesome. Ah, yes, the Kanto starter Pokémon. You know, one of the first species, one of the first pieces of evidence that we were dreaming was the starters given to us by Wormwood. We know for a fact that Bulbasaur, Charmandel, and Squirtle are not supposed to look the way they do here in Ego. As I said before, the nature of dreams, a series of minor, surreal inconsistencies that, we're, you know, that we subconsciously ignore. Perhaps just another natural mechanism to keep the dream going. I digress. Figured we should take a few minutes to go and nab us the original Kanto starters. Don't worry, though it is technically theft, it will be... It will just result in one of the many timelines where red partners with Pikachu. Oh, well, that's encouraging. Because this is a different reality altogether, you will not be able to bring your team with. I'm working on a fix for that, but you shouldn't even need them in this case. You would just be dropped into Pallet Town at an opportune time to grab the Pokeballs they're in. Alright, that's definitely a good mission. I think I will do that one now. Ah. Alright, good to see you made it. Not that you, uh, wouldn't have. Hopping realities for the first time always runs its risks. Anyway, all you have to do is navigate toward the professor's lab, grab the Pokemon off the table in the back, and head back here. Once you've grabbed all three, I'll open the portal for you to come back. Should be pretty hard to mess this up. Feel free to look around, but you can't do anything too drastic. We don't want to create unpredictable alternate timelines if we can help it. I get the feeling I'm going to end up making one. Good old Pallet Town. Been a while. Looks like Professor Oak is talking to Red. Better let those events play out as usual. I can agree with that. Let's go check out Red's house, see if we can steal anything from him. Okay, can't steal anything from Red's house. What about, uh, what about Blue's place? Okay, nothing from him either. Okay, that's all three of them. Now to get the fuck out of here. back to my own reality. Good news, Drew. Since you've made contact with an alternate version of Kanto, it was easier for me to blend points in our timelines. What I mean is, now that we have located what we believe to be the original Kanto, 
I can pull well-known characters from that dimension and drop them into ours. All I have to do is pick a person that we might know of, and find a time in which they were aboard the SS Anne. Then I can overlap their reality with ours as I gently slide them into the SS Anne of our reality. It'll take a little more fine-tuning to convince them they were coming to Ego to begin with, but that shouldn't be too hard. Ah, what am I talking about? I've already done it! That's right, the SSN that docked in Hayesport has now retroactively brought along guests from the original Kento region. Gym leaders and other trainers may be roaming around Ego now. Excellent. That's good shit. Things are looking up. You know, there's a reason future you recruited variants of Teal. Just a simplified projection of ourselves. They fulfill the role of rival adequately enough while also being easily manipulated into following their destiny to help future you save the multiverse. Honestly, not an awful strategy if I'm being completely candid. Yeah, makes sense to me. Damn, that is a beautiful view. Just pacing up and down here trying to make this egg hatch and sunrise starts, and it is... This game's spriters really knew what they were doing. This is incredible. There we go. Having a Fletcher and bleh, having Fletchinger on the team did the trick. And there's my Bodamon. Adorable little dude, ain't he? And now to get him to start evolving. Just gotta find the right place to start mass leveling him. But I also bought a ton of items to help with his stats. Because I want to make sure he has the perfect build for the route I'm taking him. Oh damn, look who I just found in this cave. Alright, that's a challenge to take on. Good to see you, Brock. Oh yeah, I'm very eager to kick your ass. Been a long time, old friend. I can see you're not gonna make it easy for me. Realize this is gonna level him too much too fast. Uh, oh boy. I might up end up needing to revert my save. That's not good. Uh, 
I was not actually ready for this fight. I did not think this through. He's got his crowbat, though. But I did not expect him to not have just a full team of rock types. Whew! Okay, I managed to beat him. That's one gym leader down. And Bodemon evolving. To Koromon. And he just learned all of his moves at once. Okay, well, that was chaotic as all hell. Uh, wow. He evolved way too fast. Christ. Oh, and there he goes again. And predictably to a... Old favorite. This is just awesome. Oh, damn, they actually coded that move in? That's cool. I'll definitely keep Bubble in his move set. I want to make sure he's got some coverage and with adaptability, you know, he'll be able to use it effectively. Well, I think this will have to do for my first foray into the post-game. But, that's a lot of work done already. Some cool new additions to my team, one of which is definitely going to be a keeper. And we've definitely got a lot more to explore, considering all of the returning NPCs that were just dropped into the world. So, this is the Envoy of Kairos, signing out. And I'll see you guys again next weekend for another episode where we'll explore more of this world that was blocked off before. Finally feels like we can really go everywhere. Later, guys.